Welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In this video, we're going to be talking about all of the best units in 30k, but keep watching, there's some context to that title. We're going to be talking about my motivation for doing this video, which may seem a little bit competitive at first glance, but bear with me. All the best generic Space Marine Legion units, and also the best Legion specific units as well, and then a summary of what you can learn and take from this information. But before we do that, if you enjoy the content, please do leave me a like and a subscribe on YouTube. And if there is any feedback or any comments at all, please leave them down in the YouTube comments below. And now on with the show. So firstly, let's talk about my motivation for doing this video. Well, the main motivation is to equip you with the information you need to build an army that's good, but also has close games for you and your opponent. And this is partly inspired by a really good game I had last night where both me and my opponent brought armies that were really good, did what they did, were really thematic, had some great units in them and some middling units in them, and we had a really close, exciting, involved game. And I thought it might be good to get a bit more information out there just on you know what these units look like for people who, who don't know. It's also inspired in part by how many questions I get about armies. You know, a lot of people ask me, contact me directly, a lot of you guys, to ask, is my army too much? Is my army good enough? Do you think I'm going to have a good game with this? And it's very hard to say that without knowing who you're playing against. Obviously, it varies wildly. So this is really to give you the information to make those decisions yourself. Don't forget while watching this video, which is all about how good units are, that there's lots of other considerations to your narrative, your personal narrative, the narrative of the Legion you're playing, models that you like, your personal favorite, etc. Et this is just part of the puzzle. This is the part of the puzzle that goes into whether you enjoy your game on the tabletop mechanically, but it's not the only thing to build armies around. With the information in this video, you should be able to recognize what's considered generically powerful so that you can choose to use good units where needed, but you can also choose not to use too many good units should you choose to do so. And also to recognize when your opponents bring in a powerful list as well. So you can have better, maybe more evidence conversation with your opponent and say, look, you know, all of these units are really, really good. Maybe you're bringing too many, or you can up your game to their level, depending on how you want to handle that thing. Everybody handles that differently. Because, you know, sometimes the fact that you've lost or the fact that an opponent keeps beating you isn't always enough to figure out, like, why that may be. And there's lots of reasons that may be. But, you know, what you don't want is to stop enjoying yourself. So this is hopefully to give you a bit more information on that front. You can also adjust your list based on what your opponents are bringing as well. So if your opponents bring in lots and lots of really efficient units... This just gives you something to start from to know what you should maybe look at to make sure you're having good games. Obviously, if you want to use this video as the basis for building yourself some hyper-competitive armies using only stuff that I'm talking about, you can do that. Feel free. That's not what the general idea of the video is, but again, some people choose to play like that, and that's also completely fine as well. With all that said, let's move on to the list. Probably the reason you're all here. So first, let's talk about HQs. All of the Praetors... Centurions and all the armor types as well, and command squads are all great HQ choices. They've all got reasons to exist, they're all good at doing what they do. As far as consoles go, the list is a little bit longer, so I'm not going to talk through all of these in specific, but this is the list of consoles that are generally really, really good and are generally the consoles that you are going to want to use if you're looking for the better stuff in your army and the ones that you know players looking to make stronger armies are going to take. And looking at the elite slot, so it gets quite crowded in the elite squat slot quite easily. So both Cataphracte and Tartarus Terminators are great. Obviously, they've only got weapon skill 4, so they don't tend to stand up in a fight to more elite units. But just having that reasonably cost-efficient, being able to bring lots of powerful weapons, also having really great saves, just makes these generally good. And particularly if you're in something like Pride of the Legion, where they gain line, they get even better, but it's never a bad thing to be using these Apothecarian Detachments for obvious reasons. They're just generally very good as well to go with any of the troops that can take them. Contempt of Dreadnought, as a surprise to absolutely nobody, are a fantastic elite choice and probably for a lot of this edition are going to be one of the things that is used the most in this slot. And also the Rapier as well, maybe something that is less often seen or less often talked about, but is a really, really powerful option. Bring some really good guns for really bargain prices as well. 
in the troop slot, so both tactical and the spoiler squads, and people do often forget about the spoiler squads, but they are also really good, are both great choices. Not in the least because you do need line units in your army, but they do do some good stuff as well. In some legions in particular, they're, they're particularly competitive because the bonuses apply well to them or because of equipment you can take, like maybe Iron Warrior's Shrapnel Belters are great, or maybe giving them Chain Bayonets in a legion where they get to strike first, like Emperor's Children. Certain legions do make them uh, a little bit less filler and a little bit more killer. Assault squads as well. They're line and they've got jump packs. Now, this is definitely a unit that will be much more popular when it comes out in plastic, but very powerful just being able to get those units where you need them whilst also being line and using them to take on those things like heavy support squads as well. You know, it gives you a good answer to lots of things, having a, having a jump pack. Tactical support squads, also really great. One of the ways to bring lots of weapons into your army, particularly in some legions that bring special, special weapons, like maybe Salamanders, Extra Good Flamers, for example. Tactical support squads can get even better. Uh, Thousand Suns, Aether, Plasma guns are also great. But just generic Plasma guns, generic Melty guns, all those kind of things are good and definitely a good option. And then finally, Recon squads as well. These are line. They bring a very long-range weapon. They can snipe. They can take out sergeants. Also a really good choice. Dedicated transport-wise, so all of the dedicated transports are good, really, if you put them together a list that works in a way such as it uses them. But the best ones, unsurprisingly, are the cheap ones. So the Rhino, which can be very cheap and outfitted with lots of utility things. In some legions, it can get a gun that can be replaced with a better gun. It can bring a multi-melter. There's lots you can do at Rhinos. Similarly, drop pods as well are also cheap. The other dedicated transports, whilst also serving a purpose, are quite expensive and eat away a lot of your army. So you will still get good armies with them, but they're just less on the good side than these two. The fast attack slot is unfortunately not overflowing with great units. Pretty much just got two. The javelin is very good. Quite hard to kill in the same vein as a dreadnought. Just high toughness and lots of wounds and good guns for a good price. And also the ziphon as well is way cheap for the guns it brings and it's a flyer so it's got some level of survivability particularly against armies who've not brought anti-aircraft so you'll often see quite competitive armies just sticking as if on in for the cheap guns all flyers do get more competitive when they use the multiples as well so although the other flyers like the fire raptor and the storm eagle are less good or efficient from their points if you bring multiple of them they do get quite competitive because your opponent's ability to actually hurt them drops quite a bit so now the heavy support slot. So this slot is easily the most contested in the game. So both Leviathan and Eredio Dreadnoughts are very powerful for the same reason Contemptors are. Now these both come with the caveat that if you've run out of elite slots, these are the more competitive choices because Contemptors are generally better. They get better guns for the cost than the Deredio, and they're also a lot cheaper than the Leviathan. You know, the Leviathan is tougher and brings some bigger guns, but it's shorter range as its own drawbacks. So although these are both great, filling out the elite slots with Contemptors would be the more competitive option to, to go for. So if someone does bring some of these as opposed to Contemptors, they're probably playing a little bit less efficiently. Heavy support squads are obviously very good. A lot of guns all packed into one unit, very effective, can come with augury scanners, really great unit. Predators bring a lot of guns for very cheap and are a little bit overlooked, but I suspect we'll see a lot of them when they come out in plastic. The Sakaran Punisher, also a bit of an overlooked unit, but it brings a lot of shots at a really good range for a pin and weapon, and it also brings shell shock, and it's a vehicle, so it's a bit maneuverable, and can often hide from your opponent's big guns as well, so one Sakaran Punisher is a pretty good option. Whirlwind Scorpius, really good at killing marines, particularly enemy heavy support squads, out of line of sight, and also is quite cheap compared to other artillery. The Land Raider Proteus is also good, even as a main battle tank with nothing to transport, it's still a good unit, but with transport as well, it really does a lot for its points. And the Spartan, whilst being very expensive, is really the only way to deliver some of these bigger, more powerful, tougher units because of its transport capacity. So although the Spartan itself is pretty expensive for what it does, the effect of putting a big unit in a Spartan and driving it at your opponent, as most people know, is a very competitive thing as well. Okay, on to Lords of War. So Lords of War not getting super amounts of playtime right now in, in games I've been looking at, but the power levels of these Lords of War do really vary. And the two most competitive options of what's in the book are the Glaive and the Fellblade. They get lots of hit points. They're quite tough. 
you know, and they're not too expensive for how tough they are. Some of the other more 400 point Lords of War options are maybe just a little bit too easy to kill for the amount you spend on them. These two Lords of War are probably the most competitive options that are in there. All right, so special characters. So every Primarch, every Primarch is very, very good. Primarchs are way better than their points cost. And if your opponent brings a Primarch and you don't, he's going to have a natural advantage, unfortunately. It's the way the game works. Even Lorgar. Even Lorgar is powerful. Even the least of the Primarchs. And as far as other special characters go, this is a little bit of a cheat because the list would be too long. But almost every special character in the game is good. Generally, for a small upgrade in points over a Praetor or a Centurion level of points, you do get quite a lot. There's very few special characters in the game that aren't worth taking. You're generally just deciding whether you take them instead of something more generic, maybe with equipment you prefer. But generally, they're all good and all worth taking. And I do think that's why you see quite a lot of events say no special characters, because they're kind of obvious in a lot of cases. So moving on to the Loyalist specific unit. So this list is quite long. I'm not going to go through absolutely every unit, but this list is effectively all of the units that are unique that are also good. And I would uh, encourage you to pause these slides if you want to look through these lists, but there's quite a lot of information on it. So this is the first slide, which has got nine different Loyalist units on it. And then moving on to the second slide, we've got more units again. So there's plenty of units that come in those unique slots that are really, really good and really, really competitive options. Similarly for the traitors, there's lots of options in those unique slots that are really good and really powerful, you know, play a, a really good role in their armies. And there's a couple of slides of these as well that are worth pausing through and just having a little read through so that you can see what those competitive options are. So that was a lot of information very quickly. It was a big list without going into too much detail about anything. It's great for the game that there are so many different things that are good. And although the individual levels of these different units between each other can vary a little bit, and you obviously could get even more serious within these sets of units and take just the better ones again, any army made exclusively from the things in this list, mostly, is likely to be quite a powerful army at a baseline level. So if you're trying to make an army that's going to take all comers and be fun for people who are new or people who are, who are a bit more serious and you just take units from this list, it's likely you will probably beat most people quite handily just purely off the efficiency of your army. And that's obviously a thing that you may want to avoid depending on how you're trying to angle your army build. So conversely, armies that have got very few of the things on this list are likely to struggle versus armies that do have lots of things on this list again it's just a points and numbers game you know warhammer isn't perfectly balanced we all know that so if you are sticking to the stuff on this list or if you're avoiding the things on this list you're probably going to be at one end of the power scale so if i could give you one takeaway from this it would be to use this list and obviously your own experiences and everything as an everything else to inform whether you and your opponents are on similar levels you know if you're both taking half of your points value or three quarters of your points value from this list and then you've got a few more fun or interesting units in to you know add to your list and bulk it out then you're probably on a similar-ish level not that it's going to be perfectly balanced but you're probably in the right ballpark and you know if you're newer and you've got maybe less things on this list and you're consistently playing against people with more more experienced players you either know the conversation to have with people and you can say you know your list is quite strong and i'm struggling with it could you maybe help me out or you know what things you need to buy and add to your army however you use it this is just information there's nothing here to say that you should or shouldn't do any specific thing with this it's just to give you a bit of a foundational baseline understanding of which things tend to be considered good if that wasn't something that you were understanding already so that's the end of the show hopefully it was interesting and hopefully there's some useful information in there for you guys if you've enjoyed it, please do leave me a like and subscribe on YouTube and please do drop me any comments or feedback you've got in the YouTube comments below the video. Thank you very much for listening. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.